Okay, here we are. We are starting on the upper wing. We are actually going to do it. But before you started on that again, we had that center rib we talked so much about, which hooks up to the gabane. Then you had to work up the ribs that accept the outer struts on the wings for the upper and the lower, because now you have a biplane setup, which now you need to support the upper wing on the lower wing. And later on, we're going to hook the ailerons up, so we have the same hookup that way too. So you have to rig up those, and these are your outer struts. Now that you see it, now you know what I'm talking about, if you can see it. So, that's your outer outer struts. Left and right, I have all of the reinforced ribs are made to accept those struts. It's going to be something like this, I suppose. Oh, you got four individual ribs. Okay, we're on the lower rib. So you got... So that's what you're going to have. And this is already stepped up, reinforced, and then you're probably going to put some kind of capping on there. And then you're going to put a brass rod. Matter of fact, we bring that up. While you were building these up, you had to cut yourself a slot in this W5 to accept the nylon fitting. So it would slide through there. See, it's, it's completely through there. That is what you're going to fasten your struts down with when you install these struts on the wings, when you actually go for that. you see that later on, hopefully. But this is what this is all about. This is now fastening the outboard portions of the wings to the lower wings because you're dealing with a biplane. This is my first biplane. I'm liking this. This is, this is, this is fun, but it's very time-consuming. I think now I have all of my reinforced ribs, everything is ready to go so I can start setting up. But I believe first I have to build up the outboard outboard wing tips, which I'm going to have to soak that wood in water and bow it, something I've never done before again. So this is going to be another experience. We're looking forward to that but I believe that's what you're going to see next. So, onward. This is just like any other model or scratch building. Any model's like this. Scratch building's even worse because now you have to come up with your own parts. With a kit, you get the basic parts and you just have to make them into what you want them to be. These are the plans. These are the two wings. This is going to be a good size, good size plan. For a biplane, anyway, because what you see here, the actual wingspan of that upper wingspan or lower, that's the two wings side by side, just a print, nothing sitting on it, and then Time. So note note the time on the on the screen right now because we're gonna hop on through this on the video anyway. This is gonna take me some time. I would say the wings right now will probably take me a good four or five days. Cause, you know I'm not gonna work my ass off on this. This is to be fun. Plus it's also to take up my time through the strike. So what I see on the news today, it looks like it might be a little a little longer. So here we go. Here we are. 
the following day, 11 o'clock in the morning. Last night before I went to bed, I soaked all the balsa strips in water for an hour or so and uh, did my outboard wing tips on my wings. I actually, I started my outboard wing tips. That, that had to be soaked and it's done in strips, pinned in there and it's been drying all night. I'm going to hit them with a blow dryer before I actually glue them, make sure they're dried out some. I'm going to glue them and then I'm going to mark them for what they are. Don't take them off of there without marking them. And then we can move on with the wing, I believe. <laughs> I keep saying that. <clears throat> but this is the first time I've ever attempted this. It wasn't all that hard. It was it was more s scary in my head, I guess, because it, it came out looking pretty good as far as I can see. So we're going to go ahead and dry these out, glue them, mark them, take them off. I did both the upper and the lower wing last night to get it out of the way. You might as well just do it. You can see the outboard out there. I don't. I'm not going to build both wings on this board at the same time. I was thinking about it, but it would be stupid to do that because you build the upper wing as a whole wing. So I extended my building board. You know, I work off styrofoam. It's as flat as I, you know, we don't have to get too crazy about this. Some people really get crazy about their flat boards. I've built all my models this way, and it does perfectly fine. But the upper wing is a full wing. The lower wing is built in two pieces and then glued together because it's got a dihedral on it. The top wing is a flat wing. The bottom wing is, is not. It's a dihedral with... So you build that in two pieces. So here we go. We're going to start on this wing. Well, first I thought I'd note that I do have these completed. These are the end caps that I did. I CA'd both, both sides of it. Before I took, took them loose off of the board itself, I gave myself marks that hopefully I'll remember where they go, but it... Uh, We'll find that out later on, but this is the finished product on the end caps. All of them basically look like this, and I have a mark. This is the upper right facing this way, and I have cellophane on top of the board so I don't glue myself to the board, and we're going to build the wing right on the board. Okay, here we are, the afternoon of the 20th. And you are actually seeing the birth of the upper wing now. Right now I have main spars are tacked down. Uh, all ribs are on except for outboards aren't glued on. Very far outboards because you want to uh, wait until you get your bowed tips back on there. Do some fine tuning. You're pinning right down to the blueprint. Go piece by piece by piece. Try and get it as flat as you can. This is a flat wing, so the entire wing is being built right now. Lower wing will be built in two sections. So as you can see, you can start seeing everything start coming together now. A lot of pieces here. Give you a close-up shot. You can see that main, how the main torque box in the middle comes into play now. That's where the cabane pin goes through and actually holds this on, and then you have the outer struts. But you can, if you can look and see the T-pins, T-pins holding it down. I work on styrofoam, so we got T-pins pretty much tacking everything down. Everything's square, and I got spot glued all the way down. All the way down that uh, main spar. It's all tack glued on there. Give you a sideward shot here. See with this sideward shot here, put the back light on. 
see the difference. There's a backlight. That's without the backlight. Looks a little bit darker. Gives you an idea of the sequence of how this wing is going together. See the back portions of these ribs have set waterline marks on all of them all the way down. So the sequence of this wing is a little bit different than most because you I've never had spacer blocks like that all the way down. Once you're done building this thing up, you're going to cut all those off. And then your all your ribs all the way down are set at the same angle of attack to the main spar, which all connects to that center, the very center rib. See the very center rib there? The one the cabane pin goes through. Everything's sitting at the same angle as that. That's how you're maintaining that angle of attack on this upper wing. A half an hour later, I have all trailing edges are on. Uh, upper main spar is on. Upper auxiliary spar is on. Lower auxiliary spar is not on at this time because of those waterline indicator tabs that I was showing before. I can't get the wing flat on the print for those. So that'll have to go on after I take the wing off of the building board. So now we're going to beef up trailing edge and install leading edge. Taking a picture of <coughs> this right now <coughs> before I start winding down for the night, I guess. Starting to get C8 out. Eyes are burning, eyes are watering. Um... What I got here is all leading edges on. They're completely unshaped right now. You can see the hole for the pin through the center. Uh, you can see beefed up. I put uh, filler block in here on the ribs. I guess I probably should have just made them solid. I cut them up for the ribs being silly, I guess. Could have just put them straight across as a whole. Those are the beef up the structure for like when I want to tear the wings off. You know, like going crazy. Um, the whole trailing edge has been beefed up as well. Well, I don't know about beefed up, but you can take a gander. You can see the little gussets in the corners. I was done all the way down. The trailing edge. Uh, I'm about ready to start putting the bent wing tips on. You can see there's the strut rib. This is the top wing, so you're seeing the top of this. This will be all that big hole will be all covered up. The outboard strut goes on the bottom side of that. But this is almost ready for me to start sheeting although I got to do a little aileron work I believe you make the wings first make them as a whole first and then when the wing is done as a whole then you cut your ailerons out of that wing so now your ailerons are exactly matched fitted part to the wing so I think we're about winding down for the night. The wing has got a damn good start. I did most of this today. Well, I did all of this today. I set this all up today, so <clears throat> not bad. Moving on. Good afternoon. Here we have the upper left outboard wing tip. This one is installed. All right, the tip itself is glued into place. Still have a few things to do. Got to cut off the leading edge, trailing edge, make them round. Got to tie in the auxiliary spar. Got to splice in a main spar. And 
then we're going to go with the planking, but I still got to get to the other side. So we still got, we got two, uh, two of these to do. So I'm about done with this one for now, I believe. I'm going to move on to the other side. This here's the upper left. Okay, here we are with a basic finished wing tip. I use my cute little ball peen hammer. Isn't that about the cutest little hammer you ever saw? Okay, what we got is the wing tip. I went ahead, I was supposed to wet that and bend that, and it just was too time consuming for that little miscellaneous spar. So I spliced in auxiliary, I spliced in the main. Cut off leading edges. This hasn't been fine tuned yet, but it's about ready for a couple more gussets and some corners here. And the upper planking. But I still have to finish the other side, which is tacked on. Yeah. Uh, you can't see it out there, but the outside is. The other side's all tacked on, and I. I went ahead and moved to this, what am I on, I'm on the upper left side, it's basically finished, now I'm going to go back to the right. Go back to the right and finish that side. What I am demonstrating to you right now is what we run into once in a great while. This is a major, major boo-boo that I had just figured out I had done. My leading edge of this wing is a two-piece leading edge. I should have glued one piece on, skinned, and then the second piece. If you look at this picture is what I mean is there's two leading edges here. Two-piece leading edge. I glued both of these on at the same time and I questioned myself when I did that. Now I know why. And I'm gonna to have to work around it. I should have put on the aft portion of this leading edge. Better get the camera over here. See what I mean? Now I'm right next to the picture. You can kind of get an idea. I don't think you can really this is about as close up view. I can get a little closer, but it's not all that necessary. There's two pieces here. They're glued on, same time. I got the choice of either tearing this entire leading edge back off, shaping this now and trying to skin it after I shaped it, or just shift my skin on my wing back. I'll just shift the skin back about that's about an eighth of an inch. No big. Major boo-boo, but this is, you kind of learn this from when you rebuild. When you rebuild, you kind of make your own techniques as you go. And this here, I guess you could put this in the category as a rebuild. Now, it is not per blueprint anymore. It's a major modification. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm pissed. <laughs> so I guess I'll show you what I mean. Now that I have this on there, it's not shaped yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my skin on there. My skin will butt up against the aft portion. And see, I still have no leading edge on there. So I'm going to skin it by sliding my, I should be up here, up against the forward portion of the leading edge. But now I'm going to slide myself back, glue myself to the ribs, which slides my skin back about an eighth, an eighth of an inch, but no big deal. And then I'm going to draw myself a center line down this leading edge, which would tell me where, hopefully, true center of the leading edge is. That's how I did the bonanza. And then I'm going to shape the entire leading edge as a whole versus in a two-step method. They wanted a two-step method. Now it has become a one-step method. 
And it'll look all right. Especially if I dope and soak it in. It'll look all right, but that there is a major modification in the middle of the program. This slows down the line a little. <laughs> well, and before we shut ourselves off here, let me pull back. You can see the entire leading edge is on this wing. This is what I'm talking about here. The entire leading edge all the way down this thing is now a major mod program. If you notice, since I've been doing this video, I no longer speak in hours because you start hitting these kind of things. And when you start speaking, I'm in so many hours, so many hours. That's why I have the dates on all this, on all the, the screens on these videos. You can see that, you know, you go grab a sandwich, you go sit down and clear your head, sit down and study things. That takes time as well. And if you press yourself, then it, it no longer becomes fun. You got to know when to stop, when to start. And be patient. Take your time. Because, like, right now, if you really weren't into this rebuilding, or, you know, I've done some flying, done some rebuilding, if just an average individual would have hit this leading edge problem he probably be pulling his hair out but if you've done some rebuilding on models you kind of you train yourself on this so you say well okay we'll just go around that versus average individual probably just tear this entire leading edge off and start over and and you cause yourself more damage to the model than working around it so that's why we don't speak in hours anymore. Because <laughs> this is this remod here is gonna take up some time, so